Hello and welcome everyone. So now we are going to discuss soil structure interaction. So this is also known as SSI and the study or the analysis of soil structure interaction SSI is uh, basically related to the field of earthquake engineering and this analysis is uh, specifically done on the heavier structure having higher inertia especially in the case of mega structure like hydraulic structure dams nuclear structures power plants and also in the case of high rise buildings so it is uh, very important to note that the responses that comes in uh, any earthquake seismic excitation uh, they are basically due to the soil structure interaction so there can be two type of response one can be a structural response and another can be ground response soil response okay so the structural response is mainly due to the soil structure interaction forces and this is a form of seismic excitation so in ssi analysis we will find two forces two responses one is the structural responses and another is ground responses both will be of the seismic excitation type nature and a committee of engineering research deals with the study of soil structure interaction only when these forces are going to bring an appreciable effect on the basement motion okay when we are comparing it with the free field ground motion now what is this free field ground motion free field ground motion is the motion recorded on the surface of the soil without any involvement of the structure if you remove the structure the motion which is recorded on the simple surface of the soil that is free field ground motion so ssi becomes very very important when they are going to put or bring an appreciable effect on the basement motion or the shaking of the basement in comparison to the free field ground motion so in that case this ssi analysis will be done okay now if you uh, read here the structural response to an earthquake is highly dependent on three interactive or linked system so these systems are basically linked the first one is the structure second one is the foundation and third one is the underlying soil beneath the foundation so foundation can be here called as the substructure okay and the structure can be better called as superstructure all right and third is the underlying soil so ssi analysis is the method of evaluating the collective re collective response of the three linked system here as mentioned above for a specified ground motion now this ground motion is because of some earthquake excitation okay and this ssi can be defined as the process in which now this is the definition of ssi the ssi interaction can be defined as the process in which the response from the soil influences the motion of the structure as we have said that the uh, responses are interactive the soil response will influence the structural response and the motion of the given structure affects the response from the soil so, and uh, vice versa also that the motion of the structure or the response of the structure will affect the response from the soil so it's a complete linked system so this is a phenomena in which the structural displacement and ground displacements are independent of each other although linked and soil structure forces are mainly interactive forces that can occur for every structure okay but these are not able to change the soil motion in all conditions and but soil motions are not changed in all condition and we will discuss those conditions also so what are the considerations in soil structure interaction effects what uh, magnifies or what reduces the ssi effects let us discuss and it says a structure when analyzed by considering its foundation to be rigid if the foundation is really rigid it is said to have no ssi effect in that case ssi effect is not there but most of the cases the foundations are flexible okay there is some flexibility there is some uh, stiffness 
so, okay so now you can't say that uh, ei value or the rigidity is completely infinite stiffness is infinite no it, it is not possible so this case is considered even if the interaction forces impacts the foundation okay so it's a very the, the the effect of ssi will be considered only when the force is going to impact the foundation means there is appreciable impact and the influence of this on the soil motion by the interaction forces will depend on two things one is the magnitude of the force and another is the flexibility of the soil foundation Ma and uh, magnitude of force now on what parameters does it depends so it depends on the base mat acceleration and the inertia of force can be used to estimate the value of interaction forces so this is what influence the magnitude of the force the base mat acceleration acceleration of the base mat okay or the foundation and it has to be multiplied by the inertia of the structure mass into acceleration basically is equal to the force so heavier the structure the more is the ssi effect for a particular soil site and for a given free field seismic excitation okay so most of the civil structures whether it is lying on the hard or medium soil doesn't show any sign of ssi effect now again this is very important line which is written here that on hard or medium soil if a civil structure is lying it doesn't show any sign of ssi effect so which type of soil will show ssi effect it is the soft soil all right so and a rigid foundation do not they also do not show so which type of foundation will show ssi effect basically those are foundations which have uh, a flexibility certain flexibility and uh, the influence is dependent on two factors magnitude of the force and the flexibility of the soil foundation so let us move forward as mentioned above the ssi effects are more dealt with heavy structure that includes hydraulic structure like dams nuclear power plants reactor buildings and we can conclude that the soil interaction in earthquake engineering study was mainly developed and applied for these fields of construction industry so as i said that ssi effect is prominently done in heavier structure okay and uh, another condition considered uh, in the soil ssi effect are the soil flexibility or the flexibility of the uh, foundation also second factor and third is the uh, soft soil if the soil is softer more is the chances of occurrence of softer is the soil more is the chances for the occurrence of ssi effect so here we have studied three things heavier structure second is the soil and basement flexibility third is the uh, quality of the soil if the so soil is soft more is the chances of ssi effect so <coughs> it is said that the product of mass density of the soil mass density of the soil and square of shear wave velocity will give soil shear module and uh, mass density of the soil is around this 2 tons per meter cube and the main characteristic of soil stiffness which we are calling here as flexibility now flexibility is what flexibility is inverse of a stiffness okay so the main characteristic of soil stiffness can be considered to the shear wave velocity vs now this shear wave velocity is calculated by a difficult some complex formula that we need not to go into the details but here if shear wave velocity is less than 300 meter per second soil is considered to be soft so basically this uh, if you calculate if the shear wave velocity is given so shear wave velocity decides which type of soil is there okay why we are doing this because if the soil is considered to be hard or soil is considered to be rigid then in this case we need not to do any ssi analysis but only in this case when the soil is softer and the more the soil becomes softer the more is the ssi effects okay 
so in case vs is greater than 800 meter per second it is harder soil and if vs is greater than 300 and less than 800 it is medium soil and in medium soil also you need not to do ssi effect there is no at such requirement all right so let us now discuss what is the application point of view of this soil structure interaction and we have discussed it from the beginning only that it is used in heavy structures like hydraulic structures and nuclear structures and also it is used for the structures where p delta effects become prominent now what is this p delta effect for uh, uh, a little introduction for yourself i must tell you that p delta effect is only for the lateral loads and lateral load can be of two types wind load and earthquake load but here p delta effect uh, we are studying because uh, due to earthquake loads earthquake load is also lateral load lateral load means horizontal direction that means direction of load is this and our structure is like this okay so uh, if i consider a structure like this okay a body like this a linear body then if a uh, lateral force is applied in horizontal direction like this then structure is deformed like this and if the force is p the deformation here is delta and this delta can be delta n delta n minus 1 like this delta n minus m delta naught so this is p delta effect this relationship between the load and the displacement at different stories or the points uh, where we have to do analysis that relationship is itself called p delta effect and this p delta relationship is becomes very important when a structure become a high rise building in high rise building this effect is prominent now due to this p delta effects many equations uh, are have to be uh, changed due to this p delta effect most of the equation that we study in uh, normal uh, height buildings uh, buildings having normal heights in those buildings we can apply simple formulas but in high rise building we have to incorporate some factors uh, related with this p delta effect okay so in high rise building where p delta effects are prominent the analysis based on ssi is helpful and also the study of ssi has a significant role in deep seated foundations structures supported over soft soil tall and or slender structures which have an average shear velocity of 100 meter per second and as we have said now that if vs is less than 300 meter per second the soil is softer and this uh, uh, tall or slender structure means high rise building okay so in those cases also ssi has a significant role so let us discuss the ssi interaction and structural response so based on the conventional theory it has been said that the soil structure interaction has effects that are beneficial for the structural response now how much beneficial it is or is it a myth that we have to discover now so most of the design codes what they do uh, for structures they recommend neglect neglect the effect of ssi and of course we are also not doing uh, going to do much analysis of ssi because the uh, amount of calculation or the analysis is really uh, out of the syllabus it will uh, the the scope is out of syllabus okay but uh, still we are uh, getting an introduction to ssi because it's very very important to be considered as we have discussed in these three cases you can't neglect ssi effect you cannot think of neglecting this ssi otherwise the design will be under designed okay so in many of the codes they recommend although the neglecting the effect of ssi in the case of seismic analysis of the structure but this recommendation is because of false myth what is this false myth that ssi brings good response to the structure but uh, yeah it do brings some good response to the structure but not always and the conditions 
we have discussed now in these three condition the SSI response is really worse so hence have chances to increase the safety margins so those codes um, they just neglect the SSI effects they think that SSI brings good response and hence the chances to increase the safety margins and more flexible flexible structural design can be obtained if we consider the effects of SSI and this helps in increasing the natural period now what are the benefits that comes from SSI is increase in the natural time period increase in the natural time period one is, first uh, benefit is this the time period natural time period of a structure gets increased okay first point is this so that this provides an improved structure when compared to a corresponding rigid structure okay now incorporation of SSI effects on the structural design helps in increasing the damping ratio of the structure now second benefit is this SSI all helps in increasing the damping ratio of the structure so these are two benefits that comes from SSI but these two benefits are not always there okay as we have discussed the above three cases so this study is limited or neglected for conservative design procedure and the SSI analysis is uh, very complicated in nature so they try to escape it and the neglection will reduce the complexity in the analysis although the analysis will have less complexity uh, but this means that myth put forward that the SSI effects are good for a structure is not true. It's not true all the time. Although we may neglect it because of uh, being uh, complex uh, in the nature, uh, complex because of complex nature in the analysis and uh, because of few benefits, we may neglect it, but uh, that can be of detrimental effects to the structure and uh, the design of the superstructure and the substructure is going to be unsafe because of neglecting this SSI effect. So we have to take the things very very cautiously and carefully. So what are the effects of soil structure interactions and uh, if we see there are basically two effect, three effects kinematic interaction, inertial interaction, soil foundation flexibility effects and these effects uh, we will surely discuss in the upcoming videos. Till that, stay tuned and stay safe. Thank you.